as we all know, San Diego has 70 miles of beautiful coastline, a collection of pristine beach communities, each with its own surf break. But in order to know the surf culture in San Diego, you have to understand the history behind it. And with that comes a greater appreciation of the surfing and the people in the community who've helped made history right here in San Diego. Every surfboard tells a story and every surfer has a special one to share. I, I'm out in the lineup and I turn and I look and I see my brother over on the right paddling out. And then I see my dad over at Larry's left, just over by the pump house. And then my two daughters on the other side. And I was like, wow, we all coordinated and are here at the same time. And I just, I don't know, it was a really warm feeling just to have my whole family out in the, the lineup. At about eight, nine years old, he loved, one of his favorite things to do is to take off behind me, sneak up and blast right by me and try to, try to scare me. <laughs> and then of course he taught me how to find wax on the tide lines. For Debbie and Eric Gordon, it's more than just a story. It's the legacy of their father and the heart and soul of the family business. Gordon and Smith Surfboards, one of the most successful surfboard companies in the world. GNS was probably in the you know, top three, top five labels for three decades strong, surviving through a lot of eras. Gordon and Smith Surfboards started its humble beginnings back in 1959 in this tiny garage in Pacific Beach. Larry and Floyd had the idea of shaping foam longboard surfboards during an era where surfers were eager to ride something easier to maneuver. The foam blanks came out and the idea took off. Like a set of waves on a good surf day, Gordon and Smith were stoked. Their surfboards became a hit. GNS didn't have much competition with the foam board for about two or three years, which allowed my dad and my uncle to uh, actually get really much better at what they were doing. <laughs> I mean, it took me my whole lifetime to put all the dots together what my dad actually accomplished. Today, Gordon Smith Surfboards is owned and operated by the brother and sister duo. And while the two have put their own spin on the business, they both admit the company still very much runs under their father's core values. We worked under my dad for so long that we run it the same way. We, we fit people for a surfboard. And even if you're a beginner or advanced, you know, we'd listen and, and you know, get the right model and, and the right fit for, for a person. Carrying out the same business model they did out in the water, they also did on land with skateboards. It was, it was uh, huge. Every magazine you would open, you would see GNS team riders in surf and skate. So uh, that was definitely the big crescendo. Today, Debbie has taken over the skateboard side of the business, who says has had its fair share of challenges in a male-dominated industry. But like her father, she's a visionary. I think I've made some headway and there's a lot of women out there that are doing the same thing as me and there's more of us every day and I'm really excited about that because I think it's needed and it's wanted and I think it's a good thing. We're getting to a good place. Debbie and Eric never thought in their wildest dreams that their father's innovative thinking and passion for surfing would evolve into 65 years of not only designing custom boards but shaping the San Diego surf community forever. Tourmaline wasn't always a peaceful, positive place like it is today. Back in the 1960s, it was a relentless battle of the sand between homeowners and surfers, who at the time were labeled as a nuisance to the neighborhood. The ban of surfers from the beach came with controversy, and surfers would resist. Gordon was one of the founding fathers behind the Tourmaline Surf Park project. And in 1965, Tourmaline became America's first park designated for surfing. Larry Gordon passed away in January of 2016 from complications of Parkinson's disease. I'd like to uh, be able to surf until I die, and uh, I'm having a lot of fun right now. Like a true surfer, he surfed up until the end of his life and just all the love that poured out of so many people here in San Diego was overwhelming. There's no way Eric and I can ever fill his shoes, but 
you know, to know that that's there is, is amazing. And, and uh, I, I wouldn't want to be doing anything else but trying to keep his uh, legacy going. In May of 2018, in honor of Larry Gordon's efforts to create Tourmaline Surf Park, a memorial bench was dedicated to him and his family. And it faced right in front of Larry's favorite spot to surf. I think he deserves a memorial bench. And, and I, I hope people look at it and wonder, who is that guy? And maybe they look a little deeper and find out his history, because he really did have a lot of uh, impact in San Diego on a lot of people. His legacy has made waves in the surf industry for many generations. And just like the memories of Larry riding left out in Tourmaline, the impact he made in the surf community right here in San Diego is like the feeling surfers get when they catch a wave of a lifetime. Diane Tu is on KUSI News. At Gordon and Smith Surfboards will celebrate 65 years this coming year. The family has always been involved in community charity events here in San Diego. One in particular they've been a part of for years is Luau and Legends of Surfing Invitational, which takes place August 26th and 27th at the fundraiser with UC San Diego Health to raise money for cancer prevention and detection. It's surfing with a cure with the Aloha spirit. For more information on the fundraising event, head to the website luaulegendssurfing.org. Great yeah. job. Is a brilliant Thank you. piece. You know, I have to credit Sierra, our photo drone Sierra I mean, She to talk about 65 years worth of archive, like mm -hmm. photos, videos. She compiled that and helped put it together. So that's a lot. And there's you know, such a rich history yeah. here. Yeah. You know, with yeah. the surfing and and skateboarding. Yes, mm -hmm. and that initially is how I even come to know, like uh, Gordon Smith and Eric and, and Debbie and their father's story was me learning. To, I sat right there on that sand in front of that bench when I first moved here eight years ago, hoping to learn how to surf with those people. And I, I, I remember meeting my, some of my best friends today who are surfers who still surf out there. You know, whether they're catching their first wave and learning like myself or have been doing it for years. And it's just the aloha spirit that they carry it is it's, they welcome all from all over the world. And that's why we're known for the surf community, right? Yeah. But give yourself some credit because that's a lot of content. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you could almost, mostly when we're in this business, we don't have enough source material. Sure. But you can actually have too much. Yeah. And you get swamped by it. And to be able to condense it down like that, that's yeah. just a brilliant piece of uh, Thank writing. You. Well yeah. done, you. Yeah. yeah. What a great tribute. And the little touches that Sierra, like when you show the home movies and putting in the projector. So yeah. th those little things I eat up. Uh, that's, <laughs> and the Emmy goes too. <laughs> it's, you know, I, I always say I love surfing, right? You can't understand or appreciate the sport and whatever it is, right, to your own, unless you understand the history of it. Yeah. And you have so much more respect for it. And, and just doing that story alone, I respect every surfer out there because it's, it's a passion. But there's also a lot who've come before us to pave the way. So Brilliant. we have places to serve. You capture that very well. Thank you. Thank Good you. Job, <laughs> I hope we get to see that again before the day is over. Yeah. Oh, okay.